Now that we've explained how to change your preferences and register your product, we want to go into the use of the tool. Well, on the bottom toolbar down here, we have two options for ag and for the construction and industrial engine options. Once we click construction, it's broken down into three categories construction equipment, stationary engines, and street sweepers. If you're needing to access an agricultural machine, at this point we can hit the back button or the home button. On the bottom, you'll find a picture of a tractor, which is where we'll click to go into the agricultural. On the left hand side, we've got a column broken down by manufacturers, which we can scroll through one at a time by the single down arrow, or multiples by clicking this arrow to the right here. Well, on the top bar up here, you also have options for ISO bus or your SAE standard scans here. We'll go down and choose a John Deere model tractor. On the left hand side, it's broken down by your series, or you can scroll through all of them by doing so on the right hand side. We'll pick a 7R. Now, as you can see on the screen, we've got a bunch of different modules on the right, followed by a column on the left that says Systems, All Systems Scan, which will scan for all of the systems on the machine, a Main System Scan, and then our Frequent Tests and Maintenance Resets buttons. We're going to do the All Systems Scan here, and along the top toolbar you have two options, a Scan and a Connectors button. If you click Scan without going to the Connectors button first, you'll be prompted with this message. This will redirect you back to that Connectors page. And this will give you a little information on where the connector is located in the machine, the cable you should be using, and some instructions on how to do so. Once you've selected your connection, we can go up and click Scan. We'll choose the Next button. And now it will go through and scan for every module on the tractor. Once it's found all the modules, you can expand all the faults to look at them on this screen. You can also look at freeze frame data by clicking this I. And this brings up three tabs here, one for your freeze frame data, your health and components of the fault. Under health and components of the fault, you can access the diagram and view some more information about the component. This automatically links you to that section of the diagram where you were receiving that fault code, in this case, crankcase pressure sensor. Any of these you highlight and scroll over typically give you a picture of that item. And we can navigate to other parts of the diagram from this page. On the left-hand column, we have vehicle service data, and we'll choose our level of ECM here. we can go to general or long interval and this will just give us some information on our maintenance intervals. We can add these to the report if need be. Further down the left hand column is vehicle technical data. This gives us belt diagrams, tolerances, torque specifications, and other general information here. Under the Troubleshooting by Symptoms tab, you have some generic service information here in step-by-step -step procedures. To get back, we click the Diagnostics menu on the top left. 
Now, if we look at our code, we have 101 with an FMI 4. We can take this information and plug into DTC Solutions or Knowledge Base. We'll start with DTC Solutions, and we choose our manufacturer, followed by our model, Once we click this, we get the list of all the possible codes. We'll just search in the column 101, and there's our FMI4. This will give us some information here on the code and some possible causes. Under the Fault Code Troubleshooting tab, you can add some customized information if you'd like, or click the back arrow button. This brings us back to all of our modules, and we can click and highlight the engine ECM and click connect at the top. Once connected, system identification is brought up, followed by a set of tabs on the left hand side, starting with read fault codes. Under read fault codes, We'll click this Accept button, and we're given our two faults indicated in red that they are active. We also have our buttons here that we were looking at earlier with our freeze frame data and repair information. We can clear the codes from the screen, as well as update the fault list after doing so. To go back, we'll click the check mark to accept. And the next tab is clear fault codes. We can clear from this screen or back up using the X to cancel. Under system data, there are two options, ECU data and engine load profile. ECU data is going to give us some generic information on the engine here, some part numbers and different serial numbers. Under the Parameters tab, these are things we can go in here and change, such as injector coding, DPF, and DOC coding. Under the Monitoring tab, this is where we'll look at our live data. We also have the option for a system display below. The data can be broken down further by pressure, volume, speeds, voltages. Or we can select all or narrow this down to just a few parameters. Once we've clicked the few we want to look at, we can view them by displaying the selected measurements, we can graph them, or we can show them in an interactive view. When we display them, we'll click the check mark to accept and return back to the screen. And we'll graph them out below. When using the graph, we can pause the recording, rewind back, or fast forward back to where we were. Using the back button to return, we can look at the interactive view. These can be paused, or you can click the check mark to accept and return back to the screen. System display is going to show some of our same parameters here. It's just in a flowchart format, makes it a little easier to read. Under actuate components, this is where you will do your EGR valve and fuel feed pump tests. System checks will be some of our other tests, including compression, cylinder cutout, performance tests. Under the maintenance tab, this is where we'll find our DPF commands, as well as our after treatment fault clearing. The last tab on the bottom down here will be your calibrations for your VGT, EGR valve, and intake throttle valve. Once we've finished diagnosing the engine, we can click disconnect. This will bring us back out to the main screen and we can enter other modules on the tractor if need be. Thanks for watching.